to the Neon Chronicles. Uh, this was a new kind of introduction that we're trying out for the channel, something a bit more dramatic, more cinematic. Uh, I had a tough couple of weeks at work. I had a dear co-worker that I've been working with for six years who uh, left for another job, and I felt that abandonment, the betrayal, <laughs> and what better thing to do than transmute those negative feelings into something beautiful, no matter how crude, bad, terrible, limited it is. <laughs> Hoyoverse is just such a playground to do that. So with all that being said, I'm really excited for today's video because I'm going to be having a little bit more fun with things. I'm going to be exploring the character review of Acheron from a very right-brained perspective, right? This is not a uh, review on the damage numbers, the combat, or anything like that. Although I will talk about what makes it really fun if you do end up getting E6, because, I mean, if you clicked on this video, then you know what it's about, right? You want to see if this is worth it, if you want to see if this is valuable, because today, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, is your last day. So, let's get into it. Also, <laughs> I feel it's so awkward, like, holding it, so I'm just playing with it. Uh, the last videos that I tried, it was on the stand and it felt a little bit awkward. I think this will feel more natural. The first area that I want to get into is lore and motifs, just because I feel like that's the one that a lot of people skip over. And I actually want to take you on a little journey. These are the recurring themes that we see in her story. And, you know, they play with elements of daydreaming, of insomnia, of memory loss, of dual split personalities of not remembering the dark pasts and the traumas uh, and trying to perhaps paint that trauma with a new color. We could call that escapism. We could call that creation. I think it's interesting to see how they play with all of that. And not only do they play with all of that, they do so in ways that are referential to pop culture. And while yes, to some it might just float right over our heads, I think to those that are immersed in this type of content, uh, they weave a very beautiful story. So I'm going to get out of the way and actually just show you a couple of clips that prove, I think, from my perspective, <laughs> some of these things and are also referencing this idea of ultimate destruction and annihilation of the self that comes with acceptance and the full succumbing to your creative process uh, from movies like Black Swan. And so we'll see some of those recurring themes, those motifs, what we might even call a meme these days, right? A meme is just a recurring thing that happens over time and people and culture and reinterpretations and iterations of that thing make it be new, to have new life. So let me take on a little journey and hopefully those themes will come out and speak for themselves. I want to know what she is. The remembrance is no different than the sea. Never gaze upon its surface on a starless night.
Excuse me. Are you asking me? Who are the Annihilation Gang? So as we just experienced through the visuals, through the sound design, through her trailer and her dance with Black Swan, who, you know, <laughs> it felt very referential to the movie Black Swan, and this endless samsara of the predator consuming the prey that they have clearly also expressed in other games. So... I love everything that this character is summarizing about this theme and how elegantly, how accessibly it's making those themes that if you think about way back in the day were like really, really insightful epiphanies from the big thinkers, the philosophers, and now we get to consume it in a video game. I think that's pretty fucking cool. My gaze has lingered on her for quite a while. And tonight is our final engagement. A galaxy ranger? No, I've made a grave mistake. Everyone has a past. But for some, their past is a silent abyss. Filled with those who drowned in it. Annihilation Gang. Annihilation Gang. Well, those guys. Very suspicious. I feel like it makes me think, and it could be a red herring, that maybe she's part of the Annihilation game, you know? As somebody who personifies concepts of nihilism, it would be really interesting if she was actually working with the Annihilation gang and this was actually all a ploy, a trick to get Black Swan and the Memo Keepers to not see it coming. They can see right through the truth, which would make it very hard for anybody to be able to plot anything. It would be kind of perfect if Acheron had this other dream state where she gets to control what Black Swan sees and perhaps give her some red herring so that Penacony as a whole might feel a whole lot more safe. But just a theory, I am not too far into the story because I am really pacing myself. I'm enjoying it on the weekends and uh trying to keep it spoiler free so just deductions based on some of the creative motifs and the lore that's been presented so far so something that we love to talk about here on the channel is character design and of course this video is going to be no exception to that a character design for me is one of the you know make or break things of wanting the character and they just did it again i've seen some complaints of people saying that because she has less clothing it's for whatever reason less valuable but i find that very interesting because every article of clothing on her has so much detail and so much reference to her lore that we just saw uh, and her motifs so let's go over some of those of course we have the idle animation where we start to see her go into the dream mode where it's that 
demon form. Uh, we have the purple, and even in the tattoo, we have the purple, your know, periwinkle blue mixing with that crimson, which also alludes to that contrast. Uh, we see the spines and the bones that even carry into some of her trailer work, uh, speaking to that predator chasing the prey and the vicious and endless cycle of destruction to recreate. So it's interesting how we see those motifs played out and, you know, even the headpiece with the uh, darker tones there and the shoulder piece here with more of that spine-like shape language. Uh, and we definitely see that on some of her hands. And what's interesting on her wrist, too, is that she's like shackled, right? It's like she's bound to this fate, to this mirror world and this mirror self. And the artwork here for the constellations, I also wanted to talk about. I love the pulling on the fourth one of the string, the idea of the strings of fate from Greek mythology uh, and how she gets to decide when to rip the cord talk about some team comps now uh and i guess not team comps but these are just the teams that i think are fun of course you could run her like everybody's been recommending with her dot teams or dot teams um where you do a lot of damage over time you build a lot of her skill points fast it's a great team if you're free to play uh, but of course, I think there's so many videos out there on that that I'm not going to get into that. But I actually want to talk about the teams that are enabled through that E6 because, I mean, that's the whole reason you clicked on this video, right? So we have our team booster pack here, which is going to really boost your crit damage. Don't worry too much about the damage output that you're seeing here. Just don't care to farm endlessly to get the perfect artifacts. Um, I get to the point where I'm having fun. I think it's a good time and <laughs> I'm happy. So uh, this team lots of crit damage because a lot of boosting happens and uh Branya will also give you more action advance we also have team no no, no. you go first okay this team you can use it with the withering snow set which is what i'm using here you don't need a healer that the characters can self heal uh, like sparkle did here because she was almost dead so i had to bring her action forward and then she brought acheron's action forward Next, I have Team Blady Akaruni, which if you get your hands on E6 for both of these DPSs, I mean, they are just so good. They are so selfish. They will not let any of your characters go. It's wonderful. So if your characters do go, you might as well just make them damage buffers so that they're like quick, one in, one out. So very fun team. Put them up front. In my opinion, activate the damage boosts with your skill points before the battle and it'll be a really fun time. Then of course you might be wondering, what about the simulated universe? And I had a lot of fun with the hunt path, because for this one, if you just get the action advance cards and you focus on those, and you focus on that kind of like skill gameplay with whatever cards they give you, I mean, it's gonna be Acheron the whole time. You don't even need anybody else. But as you can see here, I'm using my team DP Yas, which is a team of all D. Yeses, in case that wasn't clear. And then lastly, I want to talk about exploration because this is where she is a complete game changer, right? And one of the big reasons why I thought I want to put all my eggs in this basket, I want to get that E6 because I don't see myself taking this character out of my team anytime soon. This is definitely one of those big reasons why I think it's so fun that they're adding a way to make this gameplay feel more open world. And honestly, I never run into issues with the skill points. You got the Scooby Snacks, which you can always replenish your skill points. And there's plenty of the little rechargers around the world. So I wouldn't worry about it. And I was even like wasting skill points just for fun. Like as you can see here, like just to see how <laughs> uh, engaging it would be to try to make this into an open world game. <laughs> oh God, it's like um, The Shining. But yeah, tons of fun. I can't wait to have more characters to do this type of stuff. And then not to mention the fact that it feels like a cheat code, like with these chests. Yes, give us nothing. <laughs> so overall conclusion, E6, is it valuable? Should you pull on it? What What's the choice here? And unfortunately, the unsatisfying answer is that it's hard to say. But I can give you a couple criteria that might help you decide. If you're a player who is just wanting to collect everybody, just get the one copy of Acheron. Don't even go for her light cone. Save. So that's one pick. 
I would say. If you're somebody who wants to collect them all, got a catch them all type gameplay, then definitely just pick the one copy. But I don't think you should skip. The other type of path that you could go down is if you're the type of player who wants the damage. You want to be able to keep up, but maybe you're a low spender, want to keep up player. I would say then go for her light cone. Go, don't go for Eidolons yet because her uh, first Eidolon is a bit of a cock block, if I'm being honest. Now, if you're a high spender who wants to keep up with the damage, then I would say that you could go up to E2. And you're going to be a very happy chappy. And that is, of course, on top of the light cone because it's going to completely maximize all the skill points that you could get in a turn. And then lastly, if you're a delusional, artistic, creative maniac who just likes to invest in creative people doing cool shit, then I say go for E6 because that's what Hoyoverse is trying to put into their games in the stories they tell, in how rich the background and the context of these characters feel and how just perfectly executed the vision is across their games. So that is my personal review. I am definitely in the latter camp and why I wanted to make this review because like I said before, today is your last day. So uh, make your choice or forever hold your peace until the next banner because <laughs> there will definitely be a rerun so don't don't stress about it too much that was just me being dramatic again but thank you so much for watching i hope that you enjoyed this one as much as i enjoyed making it because uh, it's just so fun to be able to make videos and see that more people are enjoying it over the last couple of days i've been able to get tons of new subscribers and honestly if it wasn't for you guys i think i would still be in my funk I had a really tough couple of weeks at work with a coworker that I've been working with for six years, choosing to leave the company. And I work for a really small design studio. We are like a family. And so it just feels like we have had a piece of us ripped away. Uh, so that was hard to deal with. And this, the creation of this playing with my cat, <laughs> it brought me a lot of joy this week. And honestly, the week prior, because this has been two weeks in the making and it's been really hard for me to bring some focus into it so i hope it was worth it i hope you all enjoyed and i hope that i get to see you next time so please do leave a like do leave a comment if you did enjoy it or leave your thoughts on any other categories that you would love to see in a future review and i want to hear creative stuff i don't want to hear the boring like give me give me the stats give me the the uh, best artifact builds or I mean if you want to know that stuff you can leave your comments and we can answer that in comments because that's very easy for you to even just google and look it up anybody can answer that for you so even the game can do it for you these days <laughs> if you just click on like recommended gear uh, that's not really where I want to take this channel I want to be a little bit more creative here and I hope that you do too so thanks for joining today and we will see you on the next one